I got a little mail the other day. So, uh, this, uh, little box. <laughs> this is from, uh, James Deadman. And he's, uh, Country Boy Machining on YouTube. And he made me some, uh, Sharpie and a pen, pen holders. He made me three of them. Very nice of him. Uh, they have magnets on them, so you can just stick them on your mill, on the lathe. So I'm going to stick one on two, two lathes in the mill. Um, thanks, James. I, he uh, machine those up for me. Uh, I'm going to stick a few stickers in the mail to you there, James. Uh, everybody should uh, visit his channel. He's, he's been really busy lately. Poor guy is working a lot. Well, that's not a bad thing, but he is working a lot. That's good. And uh, back in uh, North Carolina. And uh, he has some fun videos there in his little shop. He's been uh, getting set up. So uh, you guys stop by and see his channel. I'll put the link on the video, of course. And uh, so you can see that. Look at a Sharpie here. Stick it in there. There we go. Throw a little Sharpie in there. Can't do it with that end because of the clip, but there you go. Throw a pencil and Sharpie in there. Stick it right on your machine. Great idea, James. Great idea. And uh, they're just made of aluminum. And a little magnet on the back. So we'll stick those on there. You'll see those in action there in the videos. Thanks, James. The new saw just arrived. We checked a few things, grabbed a cord, plugged it in. Works perfect. I love it. The 7x12 Term Pro. They had doesn't swivel or anything, but it, you know the vice does, which is fine with me. Has coolant system. Got a pretty compact unit. Runs as quiet as can be. We'll, uh, Turn it on. That's it. The noise you hear in the background is the lawnmower. But that's it. Quiet as can be. Love it. Uh, so that's going to be, uh, be a nice saw. Nice, nice little addition. Uh, we really need one. Never had one. So this is uh, this will be a really nice little unit. And it's small enough that we'll be able to get it in the shop pretty easily. All right, you guys see that in action. So I got a chunk of two by two uh, trailer axle in there. First cut. I got some coolant in there. I'm gonna see how it goes. Nice little micro adjust on the uh, feed rate piston there. This is with the blade that's in it, it came with. That my little shadow out of there. We'll move around this way a little bit too. I should have adjusted the uh, rollers a little closer, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Should sure really have those as close as you can. Adjust that. Pretty simple little knob. Slides real easy. There we go. Nice little uh, control valve. Just a valve, ball valve, so you can uh, actually shut the feed off just by doing that. You don't have to change your setting.
Cutting right through it though, it's pretty pretty much. Well, I decided oh, I will change the wheels. These are just cheap plastic wheels, and uh, I'll put a caster wheel in the front. I have a bunch of them, so I'll put a caster one like Ray did in the front. And in the back, I'll get some better wheels. Uh, whether I can't put too much bigger ones on because of the amount of the hydraulic feed of that uh, piston there is pretty close, uh, still a couple inches away. But I, I won't need a real big wheel here. I, I'm just going to be round, rolling around this flat, flat uh, concrete. So. I just put a gallon of water in that thing, came right up to the little filter screen and some coolant in there. And I have some of this uh, coolant laying around, so I'm using that. This is a Monroe Fluid Technology Astro Cut B. It's a semi bio stable, semi, semi uh, medium to heavy duty bio stable, semi synthetic concentrate. So I mixed it up 10%. That's what I did. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I mix that stuff up and put a little squirt bottle. I use it on the mill. Works actually works pretty good. But I have some of it, so that's what I'm going to try for now. Pretty simple controls. It just has a little tab. It hits the switch. It's drawn off. Down here's a switch for uh, coolant. But when you hit the main switch off, it shuts the coolant off, which is kind of nice. Like I have to put a little more water in that. Might have a little close uh, the. Guard here is hitting the, the table. So I was a little bit, a little too close. So that there's a cut off. Oh, very nice, very smooth, very nice. I like that and it looks pretty square I didn't check anything for squareness Ray, mil Ray uh, milled the faces of his and uh, so I don't know I haven't even checked anything I always like to see how things come out right out of the box now the thing uh, the saw does fold all the way up and uh, they have a little uh, table that can go on here I'll just uh, give it a check here on the squareness I like this feature, the quick uh, clamp feature. It comes loose, right? You, you know, you can just put it up there, and then, and then you crank it, and it grabs and goes up. So you can adjust it fairly quickly, which is pretty slick. Well, this is a rough surface, but let me tell you, squareness-wise, <laughs> it's right on the money. Little bit off there, top to bottom. Top to bottom, a little, little bit of taper in it. Maybe 20, 30 thous in that, but not bad. Not bad. This is side to side, though, it's, perfect. it's perfectly square. Really, it's, that, I mean, that's damn good. They're not perfect, but it's, for this sort of thing, it's really good. Uh, I might play with, play with things to tune it up, you might say. But for now, I came out uh, pretty good, pretty happy. So I did the uh, after cut uh, coolant nozzle set up the last couple of days here. Got this all done. Little adjustable nozzle, needle valve, machined all that aluminum bar up to mount right on there. Air recycled. Uh, Aircraft oil line comes around, machined up our own T with uh, barb type fittings and an adapter for uh, the aircraft uh, fittings. Spliced it in, and here's the test. Yeah. 
It's adjustable so you can get it right on the nozzle, right on the blade. Turn it on and off. Yeah, you adjust it right here. And the nozzle direction is adjustable. It's on one of those uh, it's, you know, snap locks. Works perfect. The new nozzle in action here. Little project for this morning here. Right now I got a 14 tooth blade in there because we're cutting some uh, tin material, uh, some tubing and such. But this is a piece of two inch uh, steel. I, I think it's a 1018. And that is going through it like butter. That new nozzle works. Perfect, get those chips up. That's that front one, how that one works. I think I can build a better one for that either. Might do that. That's a new nozzle in action. Don't do that like that. It's almost done already. Oh, sketch it. Perfect. Beautiful cut. Okay, we'll put in the lathe now. Okay, we're using the new saw, cutting some parts. Travis is going to show his, his new bumper he's building. Hold up here. Hold that up. So we're going to have a... This is a round tube all bent. Uh, they cut and bent up yesterday. Going to go around the front there and, of course, around this side. Uh... Then it will be sloping back like the other bumper did underneath of the plates. Travis had a little altercation on the dirt road. Altercation? And it was a wreck. It was a wreck. <laughs> uh, uh, two, two it was a law of physics. Two vehicles cannot occupy, occupy the same space at any one time. Type of thing. So uh, he has an all new front end grill. And fender and hood and paint job and door, so it was kind of bad, but not too bad that couldn't get fixed. Uh, so uh, his other bumper did a great job of protecting the vehicle still. And, uh, no one got hurt uh, in the accident uh, in his vehicle or the other vehicle, uh, so that was good. So we're building a new bumper, a little different style this time. Little bumper update. Well, Careful, Dad, fall over here. Roscoe update. There's Roscoe. He's hungry again. I think he's always hungry. Yeah, even a pretty good weld. That's the ugly one, I guess. Okay. Anyway, it's coming along.
I'm going to show you a, a little future project here. I just got the package in the mail, or UPS actually. I got this uh, Jacob's uh, Super Chuck. You know, a nice ball bearing one. I got this from, uh, I bought this from Ben Zittner. And, uh, you know, I checked the run out and stuff, and the, the jaws are things worn out, you know. So, uh, it works good. I mean, if uh, if you're gonna just use it in the drill press and stuff, but uh, I probably I'm I'm tending to use this in the mill, and it already has a nice three quarter straight uh, shank on it, so I'm probably gonna use this in the mill. So oh, I wanted a little bit better, uh, so I I was able to. Now this is an older model one, so they actually make two. They make a newer model, and it will tell you, I guess, on it. <clears throat> Excuse me, what kit or the number supposedly uh, you need for it, the newer ones, but the older ones don't say anything. So you have to, you know, so it took me a little bit of research here, but so you have to get the uh, kit for the older Chucks. Um, so it says old repair kit, or <laughs> <it's> <laughs> you know, order. And, you know, even though it's Jacob's Chuck and all that, it's made in China. Yeah, but I bought the full kit for it, uh, which comes with the jaws, not just the bit, the bearing. It's a retro kit for old style chucks with new style cage bearing and thrust washer. So uh, I'm hoping this is the right one. There's only two kits, so uh, the other one was definitely for the newer one. But I think it just comes with it comes with a new bearing, new type of ball bearing, uh, thrust bearing. And it's got the jaws and everything in there. The collar, dirty collar. You know. Alrighty. So uh, there'll be an upcoming video when I do this. I also have two other chucks. I'm going to change. Well, one doesn't have a spindle, and I purchased a couple spindles, so I'll put a spindle in that one. And the other one, I'm going to take the spindle out because it's a number two spindle. And I'm going to put a, a Morris Taper number three spindle in it. So, there's the Chuck Projects. I just wanted to show you that. Everybody else is doing Chuck Projects, so... I thought I'd fix this one up so it's be kind of like new. Alrighty, guys. Thanks. Took advantage of that Inco sale some more. Picked up a few more tools. This is a SPI dial indicator. One inch stroke. I'm going to use this on the uh, We'll put a magnetic back on it that I made up, and I'm going to put that on the use that on the lathe. Uh, it's a thousandths indicator, not half, but uh, you know, it ended up being like fifteen dollars uh, with with their discount and stuff. So that, and actually, you know, I got another one of these in it. These these are actually very smooth indicators. Uh, there you go. I mean, for the price, they are uh, really not that bad. They come in a nice box, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm kind of I'm pretty happy with them actually. And the dial, uh, you know, feels good. It's, it's fairly smooth, and uh, and then it has these little uh, uh, has these little uh, little indicator reminder mark markers. You know, you can turn around in there. Uh, but yeah, actually, I'm, I'm kind of happy with these. So it's a uh, one-inch stroke, like I said, a thousandth. And I'm going to use that on the, put that on the waves for the carriage. And I'm going to pop a magnetic back uh, on there. Here's another little tool I picked up uh, from Inco. Uh, I need a 
need a little better I uh, needed or I needed one at period that worked well I think one of my uh, edge finder I think it got bent somehow I don't know who knows so these were on sale um, these are um, Fowler ones so we'll see how they are I don't want to spend a lot of money on them but yeah, they feel okay feel feel fairly smooth on the ends Little set, you know, half inch, uh, one there, and then these are uh, two hundred thousandths ones here. So, uh, yeah, little head finder set. There we go. Not too bad. When they're on sale they're very inexpensive makes your money go a lot a lot farther